As we're filming this, there are 22 nations in the earth today that are rewriting their constitutions or undergoing revolutions. There is this impulse in the modern man, driven by ideology uh, rather than by settled principle, that the best way to move forward is to tear down the old conventions and to start afresh. It always reduces to that Christ or chaos. The serpent is a devourer. First John says that the devil was a murderer from the beginning. He's a destroyer. He wants to foment chaos. We need to understand that it's either following Christ, that's the way of ordered liberty. If we follow the path of licentiousness, which is what the devil is offering us right now, our lusts will drag us down into a frenzy and a bedlam of appalling bloodiness, frankly. Why is the rule of Jesus in the world today good news? Not just for me in terms of my salvation, but why is his rule good news? Well, it's good news because Jesus is God. Jesus is the righteous one. He's the one who Isaiah 42 says is gonna establish justice in the world. And uh, he won't grow faint or weary until he's done so. And the coastlands are waiting for his law. Well, many Christians are under the assumption that we live in a temporary world of no consequences. Uh, we're just here as, as pilgrims passing through this world to another world. Kind of the pilgrim's progress idea of how the world works. Now, there is some truth in that. We're, we're temporary beings. We're gonna die one of these days. But the question you have to ask is then, why would God have created us in the first place? And why would God have put us in this world if this world doesn't count for anything? When I mean, this is where God put us. I think post-millennialism has moved beyond sort of a theology about the millennium. I think in a good way it's, it's been hijacked by people who are just saying, we're just going to get things done. I think it's fine to let the pagans do what they're doing. I think it's great. I think, I, I think the Bible shows us, let them run and go first. Let them go and build. We will inherit the cities. We will inherit the fields. We will inherit everything that they do because we are being patient. Is there progress between the fall of man, in which we left Paradise One, and the restoration of the church and the married supper of the Lamb, which will begin Paradise Two? And if there isn't, then Satan, at least with respect to history, won the match. There is a phrase for this view of history, it's called defeatism. If you say that the church will fail, inevitably fail, must fail prophetically, that's the premillennial view, that's the amillennial view, then why is that not pessimistic with respect to the effect of the gospel in history? We're constantly pushing back the curse in all directions at all times, and that is a Christian view of progress. God loves the world. The world is not about to end. Christianity will be victorious.